Hi guys, welcome! In this video, we'll take a closer look at the Thunderbolt Magic build for the Supernovus. The Supernovus is a special job class which takes advantage of nearly every first class skill making them highly versatile in battles. For this particular reason, there are a lot of builds available for the Supernovus that may utilize either physical or magic attack. In this video, we'll focus first on the magic damage build for the Supernovus. The Supernovus class has various elemental magic spells such as Firebolt for Fire, Thunderbolt for Wind, Storm Gust for Water, Heaven's Drive for Earth, and Spell Blast for Ghost Element. In this guide, we'll focus first on the Thunderbolt build for PvE. Thunderbolt is an AoE skill which calls down lightning to a specific area dealing wind element burst damage to all enemies in range. This is a skill that can be obtained from the Acer Monument runes and we can unlock it up to skill level 7. This is a good supernovice farming skill option since not only does it give high damage output, it is also an AoE skill giving us more kills per cast. In this guide, we'll discuss the most important stats, skills, runes, equipment cards, and farming tips for the Thunderbolt build. Hopefully by the end of this video, you'll have a better understanding on how to unleash the true potential of the Supernova Thunderbolt in the battlefield. Alright, without further ado, let's begin. First, let's discuss the recommended stat distribution. The most important stat to pump first is Intelligence as it increases magic attack and helps with SP region. However, since the spells of the Supernovus has a long chant time, you also need to add points on Dexterity which reduces variable cast time. There's no need to put points on Vit or Agi for survivability since this is just a farming build and our priority is to one-hit kill the monsters. However, if you feel the need to add Vit or Agi for increased HP or Flea, it is up to you. Next, let's discuss the most important skills to get. For the advanced Novus skills, you should allocate points on Level 10 Blessing to increase Strength, Dex, and Int by 20 points. Level 10 Increase Agility to increase Agi and Movement Speed. Level 10 Improve Concentration to increase Agi, Dex, and Int by 10 points. And last but not least, we have Level 10 Increase Spiritual Recovery for SP Region. This is important since Thunderbolt for farming can eat up a lot of SP. Once you've reached Job Break for you may allocate the additional skill points on the following. Level 15 Blessing to further increase Strength, Dex, and Int by 25 points. And Level 15 Improved Concentration to increase Magic Damage and reduce Fixed Chanting for a certain time interval. At this point, we have covered the essential skills to increase our damage. You may allot the remaining skill points whichever way you like but as a suggestion, you may unlock Level 5 Spurs Recovery which is a passive skill that will increase our SP regen and level 15 improve flee mainly for the bonus movement speed. For the super novice skills, the two important skills to prioritize are level 15 vulture's eye which will increase our casting range. This is excellent especially for farming as the increased range will greatly improve our efficiency. We can see here that our super novice can even reach mobs outside of our screen visibility range. This will help us greatly especially in high competition farming spots like this one in the Magma Dungeon. Next, another notable Super Nova skill for farming is Level 10 Inspiration. This is an active skill which increases overall abilities by 10 and hit, attack, and magic attack by 100 for 150 seconds. This will be a good buff to increase our overall damage and help us one-hit the mobs for farming. As for the remaining skill points, allocation will be up to you. Now let's go to runes. Runes are vital for the Super Novice class as these unlock new skills and increase the damage output of magical skills. As mentioned earlier, we can unlock Thunderbolt from the Acer Monument runes. You would need 152 gold medals and 66,000 contribution to unlock all 7 levels for Thunderbolt. It is ideal to have it at max level since, as we can see here, not only does the magic attack multiplier increase, but the cast time also decreases as we increase the level. Thus, a higher Thunderbolt level would be more efficient for farming. The downside is that the SP cost increases as well. Next, in order to increase our damage, we can unlock the 5 Thunderbolt effect runes, which will give a total of 30% additional Thunderbolt damage. We can also opt to unlock the Thunderbolt critical runes. This will give a 40% chance to crit plus an additional 18% damage per rune. Since there are 4 Thunderbolt critical runes, we will have a total of plus 72% damage. 
Now those are our main Thunderbolt skills. If you have more contribution to spare, here are other useful runes. 4 Ignore M Def runes which will give a total of plus 4% Ignore M Def. 12 Int runes which will give a total of plus 13 Int. 6 Inspiration Blessing runes which will give a total of plus 60 Magic Attack brought about by the Inspiration skill. That's an additional 60% Magic Attack from the base Magic Attack given by the Inspiration buff. And lastly, another optional rune is the 7 Spirits Recovery and Power rune. This will give a total of plus 70% natural recovery for Spirits Recovery. This means this would improve our SP region if we have the Spirits Recovery skill unlocked. If you have remaining contribution points, just allocate them on nearby Magic Attack and SP runes. Feel free to experiment and modify your runes based on your playstyle and personal preference. Now that we have covered the Acer Monument runes, let's dive into some of the notable advanced runes. For this build, we have two notable S-rank runes. First, we have the Flaming Thunder rune, which can increase the Thunderbolt critical rate by 1-20%, to increase crit damage by 1-30%, to and increase overall Thunderbolt damage by 1-20%. to Another rune that may be useful is the Soul Gathering rune. This will increase improved concentration duration by 0.1-3 to seconds, and increase the damage bonus by 1 to 40%. Up next, let's dive into the recommended equip set and cards. In general, we need to equip items and cards that increase in Magic Attack, M Pen, and Ignore M Death to inflict higher damage output. It is also essential to get items that increase Dex and reduce cast time for faster chanting and spells. If needed, you should also focus on SP region items since Super Novices have a low SP pool, yet their skills cost a lot of SP. For weapons, the Staff of Element Fusion is the most suitable for farming. Since Thunderball deals AoE magic damage, using this staff will deal higher damage than using a Wizardry Staff. However, you may still use a Wizardry Staff if you already have one since it does give high raw magic attack when a set effect with a Robe of Cast, Crystal Pumps, and Eye of the Lahan is activated. You may choose to synthesize your weapon for a higher damage output. As for enchantment, you should aim for the magic 4th enchantment for variable cast time reduction. Keep in mind that only raised cards affect magic damage. So use Flora card when grinding Anolian, which is a fish race, Goblin card when farming Fire Fledging, which is a brute race, and Hydra card when grinding Demi Human mobs from the Lighthouse and Homunculus lab maps. For the offhand, we may use either the Sacrifice Book for 30% Ignore M Death, or a Tier 1 Statue of Mother Mary for a plus 4 Dex and additional SP region. As for enchantment, you should aim for the Insight 4th enchantment which grants additional Ignore M Death for your offhand. Next, for the armor, similar to Warlocks, you may use the Robe of Cast as it gives high int, magic attack, and variable cast time reduction. Upgrade and refine it to higher levels for bonus int, dex, magic attack, and ignore M Death. Similar with your weapon, you should aim for the magic 4th enchantment for variable cast time reduction. As for armor cards, you may use either an Agav card for additional magic attack or a Munak Star card for more ignore M Death. Up next for garments, the best option is a Nato Kixmon 2, since it is the only garment that grants int. Upgrading and refining it will give additional int, variable cast time reduction, ignore M Death, and magic attack. Then you should aim for the arcane enchantment for higher magic damage. As for garment cards, equip a Wild Rose Star card for more int. For foot gears, the crystal pumps would be the best option for higher int and magic attack. This is also needed to activate the set effect with the wizardry staff. Robo Cast and Eye of the Lahan. An alternative is a Rune Boost which also gives magic attack. However, for beginners, you may use the Shoes first which helps in SP sustainability. Similar with the Garment, you should aim for the Arcane Enchantment for your foot gear for higher magic damage. Ideally, for foot gear cards, you should have a familiar Star card as it gives a significant boost in magic attack. However, this is quite expensive. Cheaper options for beginners are the Black Witch Star card which gives magic attack and int, or a Gira card which grants int and SP region. For accessories, here are a few options. We have the Eye of the Lahan, the Orleans Gloves, or the new accessory Pocket Watch. The Pocket Watch is dropped by Dark High Wizard Katarina. It gives adequate magic attack, int, dex, and ignore mdef. Refining it to plus 8 grants plus 5% magic attack. Pairing it with a monocle activates a set effect which increases HP and SP region speed, ignore mdef, and magic attack. As for accessory cards, you may inlay a Zebra Bear Star card for plus 3% magic attack, or you may also use a race damage modifier depending on the mobs you're farming. Lastly, for the headgears, these are the suggested items. 
For the head, we have either the Quaff, Norma the Unicorn, or the Ned Hogg's Poison Fang. For Hedrick cards, you may use the Seal Apocalypse card for plus 10% Ignore M Death, or Incubus card for plus 15% SP Region. For the face, we have the Epic Spirit Lightning for plus 10% Wind Damage to amplify the damage of our Thunderbolt. Refining it gives plus 1% Wind Damage for each refined level. We may also use the Monocle if we are using the Pocket Watch accessory. For the mouth, we have the Angry Snarl for less 10% variable cast time reduction, or the Starlight Lullaby for less 5% cast time variable and plus 4% magic damage. For the back, we have either the Devil Wing, Bright Light, Lost Star Track, or the Golden Archer from the Feast Gacha which gives plus 5% wind element damage. And lastly, for the tail, any damage modifying tail such as a Flower Pistol, Wind Purse Drake, and Golden March would be suitable. As for pets, you may choose any of the following. Sohi for increased magic attack and SP region. Skewer for dex and int. Mechanical Hound for increased magic attack and reduced SP cost. Harpy for increased magic attack and wind damage. Or the Moonlight Flower for increased magic penetration. Lastly, here are some tips you need to take note of when farming. Tip number one for your auto skill slots, put in Thunderbolt and your self buffs. Blessing and inspiration. Tip number 2. When farming, here are some spots to consider. When starting out as an advanced novice, you can use Thunderbolt to farm Anolians in the Glassheim Culvert. You can do this until you reach base level 99. After reaching level 100, you may go to the Clock Tower Basement 1 and farm Phenomena which are of Water Element. However, they do not spawn quite close together, so some may find it more efficient to still farm in the Anolians even with more than 10 levels cap. Another farming spot that you may try at this stage is the cruiser spot in the Toy Factory first floor as they spawn near each other. At level 110, you can start farming in this highly coveted spot at the Magma Dungeon first floor. In this area, you can farm clusters of Fairy Deveruchi, Fire Fledging, and Fairy Main which spawn quite fast. However, you'll find yourself competing with lots of Warlocks in this spot, so you may opt to find alternative spots such as the Homonkidil Slab basement first floor to third floor. However, you need to be careful as minis and MVPs can spawn near you when farming. Tip number 3. At early levels, SP sustainability would be a problem. Aside from having SP region gears, you may combat SP problems by doing the following. First, cook and eat batches of 999 one-star foods for SP discharge. Second, collect free warm meals or buy hot meals from the food shop NPC. And third, place playing dead in your auto skill slot. This is the cheapest but more time-consuming solution. Tip number 4. Next, if you want to boost leveling up, consider becoming a mentor. In the new episode 6 Mentor Rewards, we can now exchange medals for meteoric chains for times 4 EXP and loots, mentor potion to extend our combat time by 30 minutes for a maximum of 60 minutes per day, and we also have the monster records which allow us to instantly obtain monster lab rewards such as EXP and loots without affecting our combat time. Tip number 5. Next to boost damage, you may eat cooked foods that increase magic attack and magic penetration such as the original will juice. In addition, we could also consume int meals for higher magic attack and magic damage. Also, another way to boost our damage is through our praying cards. Prioritize getting M pen, Ignore M Death and Magic Attack. For the elemental praying cards, prioritize wind damage. And for my last and final tip, you need to invest in your raw magic attack, which I have talked about in one of my previous videos. If you haven't watched that yet, I haven't linked down below. Having a huge magic attack will definitely synergize with your skills, runes, cards, and equipment to further enhance your damage. Alright, so far we discussed the most recommended stats, skills, runes, equipment, cards, pets, and tips for the Magic Caster Super Novice build. I hope this guide was helpful in setting up the foundation for your character. As mentioned earlier, the Super Novice has a wide variety of skills and offers a lot of flexibility, so this magic farming build is only one of the many ways we can build our Super Novice. Feel free to comment down below if you have suggestions of what you want to see next. Alright, that's it for this video guys. Don't forget to like if you enjoyed watching this guide. If you're new here, I would love for you to consider subscribing by hitting the subscribe button down below. I would love to have you back. Thank you for watching and see you in our next episode.